kind of you. I, yeah, uh, yes. And, uh, I, I, I wouldn't want to be a burden that way. I, I, if it's too much, I don't know. I just I don't want it to. I, I don't want her to come for me. It is fine. There are enough of us in the inn that I have a feeling she is afraid of the place. She nods, and again you see her look over at the mural. Um, Oz kind of smirks. It does seem to be somewhat of a nexus for people like us. Looks at it all. Yep. Hmm. And we're going to pan outside as uh, that conversation. Everyone is kind of looking over at the mural. And as we pan outside, um, Varys is taking Tover over to taking Tover over uh, to a person he knows that will do some some tailoring. But as you guys are walking out of the inn, um, probably ten feet away is the woman in the blue cloak behind you. Oh, she's standing in front of us now. No, she's behind you. Oh, and we don't see her. And we keep going. Yeah, you 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 open the door. You walk out. You're 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 ahead of her. As she sees you leave, she slides out, closes the door, and follows um, follows the two of you. She's trying to slide into some DMs. <laughs> um. Uh, yeah, I'd probably just like continue walking because I, I don't have a reason to look behind me. Okay. So, uh, Tover, how how? Do you like get a lot of word from like how the people in the elven like realm are doing? Well, I just came from there, and they. Oh, where do you hail from? Oh, the capital, which is called I don't remember. Ah, Lithandriel. Ah, yes. Lithandriel. Oh, you wrote that. That's smart. I should do that. Lithandriel. 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 Okay. Ah, yes, I've been there a few times as a child. Of course, yeah. we, we all do. How, uh, how fair are the nobles in that part of the kingdom nowadays? The nobles are doing fabulously. Seems like all that druid nonsense is dying out a little, which is nice and not so nice considering I was one for a tiny brief amount of time. But mm. yes, they're all doing wonderfully. Have you happened to have any word of the... Uh... The Mahonora Woods, by any chance? The Woods? Fellow, you're asking the wrong person. I don't know anything about the Woods. I'm <laughs> ah, it's a shame. I'm I was a hoping to have some more word about, like, the region surrounding my home. I got a letter a while back that we have hot water for some reason. Hot water? <laughs> wow, yes. that must be so refreshing and new for you. How exciting. <laughs> you know... That might have been a project my sister started. Like, she she intended it for humanity, but I don't see any reason why we should exclude the wood elves. It's called Habitat for Humanity. It's where we build the decent homes. It's pretty good. Right. Ferris, as you're trees. looking at this fellow, uh, there's something about him that looks familiar. Looks familiar. I have favorite enemy dragons, if that helps. <laughs> no. <laughs> There's oh, something no, about Tover that looks familiar. Yeah, my draconic heritage might, like, y you might see that. Yeah, you definitely noticed that. That yeah. appeals to you for sure. Um, but that is not, that is not what looks familiar to you. Hmm. My dear friend, there's something about you that looks awfully familiar to me. Maybe you've seen me around in the city. I do draw quite an audience. <laughs> yeah, so it appears. Uh, I'm gonna take a closer look at him and try to like poke my memory. Um, yeah. I'm gonna send I you a private message really pipe. quick. Ooh, a private message of all things. Yeah, but continue having your conversation as you're as you're watching him. All right. Well. At least the woods appear to still be standing. There's something. As so as what I was know. your, what was your like occupation? Like, I know you were a noble. Like, what were you involved with before you apparently went off and joined some of the druids for a while? 
Oh, I, I wasn't really doing much of anything. Just, you know, enjoying life, living quiet time. Ah, typical noble then. Born with a golden spoon in your mouth. Exactly, I see. it was wonderful. Uh, what made you leave for the Druids then? That's quite a difference oh, in that's, lifestyle, that's wouldn't you agree? quite a tragic story, really. You know, I am a sorcerer and I throw up some, some prestidigitation sparks. Ooh. So my friends and I, we figured, hey, we're powerful, high elves, we know how to fight, we all know how to use swords and whatnot. Why not go on a little adventure and kill some goblins? And we all thought that was great fun. Of course, we were all very drunk at the time, but it seemed like a smart idea. Anyway, one of my friends got horribly wounded and I was like, I will use my magic to save you because I'm a sorcerer. And then I remembered, I can't do that. That's beyond my ability. And I, I thought, that's unfair. I'm a high elf and noble. I'm supposed to be able to do anything. That's what privilege means. So <laughs> I joined a druid to get myself some, some healing magic. Because, ah. you know, I'm not about to join some cult worshipping a god, because that means I get my healing power from him, and he or her whim. That's not good. Uh. This druid power is mine, and I, I druid craft like to make a plant wiggle. I see, that's a... Uh... The friend still see. died, of course, because, you know, I didn't have it right then. Which is awful sad. But now, if a friend should fall, I can cure his wounds. All right, so it's healing magic that's your speciality then. Oh no, it's just something I wanted in my repertoire. <laughs> Very interesting. Very interesting. That's going to be good to have around, for sure, with all the strange happenings around here. And I look yes, at him I... ever slightly warily. Hmm? But, like... You wouldn't really notice much about that. Just, he, you he know, you might imagine that he's weirdly, questioning, he's like, like, why such a noble would then go off to the druids, and you know. Well. Just... Anyway, um, the Taylor did you have any of that wild magic happen to you? I lost them. Yes, blood. quite distressing. <laughs> ah, yes, that seems to be a bit of a predicament. We might have to fashion you something out of wood. You could probably use your druid craft, in fact. You know, you know that your... might actually be handy for that. That's a good idea. You might be able to grow yourself a wooden, like, club foot or something. Or literally oh, grow yourself cool. a new foot. I don't know. I haven't spent a lot of time with the druids. You haven't? But you're a, you're a wood elf. I thought druids were super common among your folk. Bit of a different breed of people, let's just put it that way. Really? I had no idea the, the Wood Elven community was so diverse and, and complex. Yes, it's almost like you never quite took the time to take the, to get to know us properly. Um, you know, that might anyway, be... the tailor should be around here somewhere, I think. Yeah, you look around um, and you you see the, the place where the tailor lives. Um, it's back past the church, um, off to the back corner where, um, it's like a little one-way street that ha ends in a dead end. Um, and the person who's, who is known for doing some tailoring, uh, lives at the end of the street, but you knock on the door, no one answers. Hmm. Well, that just won't do. Do you happen to know where this person might be spending their time? Unfortunately not. I'm, I'm... I've only been here for a few weeks. I'm not like that intimately familiar with everyone yet. Although I am starting oh, to learn fine. my way around now. It's hey, been a bit busy I won't here. ask you what you're doing here if you don't ask me what I'm doing here. How's that? I mean, clearly this is not a place anyone would want to live. It seems to be an interesting town to live in, that's for sure. But that's kind of why I came here. I do me happen too. to... I like I like the sights. I like to see what is up. And so far, this town has definitely not disappointed in that regard. It's On my first day, I almost rode a T-Rex. What's that? Ah, you see, it's this giant lizard creature with tiny arms that, for some reason, are still attached. I have no idea. It's a fascinating creature, really. Giant it appeared lizard. to have some sort of weird suit on. It thought it was people. Ha! Huh, that is that is very very strange. Yes, you haven't heard the strangest thing yet, my good sir. Oh? 
Near the end of the fight, as we were cl drawing close on the kill, a dragon appeared out of nowhere and made off with this weird lizard creature. Oh, I love dragons. What color? It was an adult red dragon. A red one? Ugh, that's the worst one. Well, maybe what? the blacks. What's so bad about the red I ones? I feel then? horrible that I've said that now on Twitch. Can we take that back and have you add like It's on the dragon? internet forever, Tober. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's gonna clip it. Yeah. Let's not. But oh, what no. is so bad about red dragons in particular then? Not the reds? Yeah. Hail space striking. I mean, the, the, the aggressive, you know, oh, look at me, I'm a tyrant, do as I say sort of dragon. Mm. And if you don't, they kill you. <laughs> and generally speaking, of course, they're all different. Thank I you so say, much, Eric, uh, for the sub. I really appreciate it, homie. Uh, Eric Volgaris is amazing. Also, give him a shout out and follow. He's my DM for Mouse Guard, and he's he's fabulous. Sorry, go ahead and, and continue your RP. Sorry, gentlemen. You haven't, you know, this this dragon is quite adept at killing. Are you familiar with a uh, a gangrel? Like a big Not creature that like puffs noxious smoke. He's a city oh, elf. Kind of vampire. Okay, I must be disinformed. Well, you see, I'm, I, as a wood elf, of course, have a bit more expertise with nature than you do, my good sir. I, oh, thought, I thought it only natural to fill you in on the strange happenings in this town and the I current I appreciate threats. it immensely. Like, I don't know a willow tree from, you know, whatever that thing is. It's a pine tree. A pine tree. <laughs> Fabulous. I'm learning so much today. And maybe yes. I could teach you about indoor plumbing. Indoor plumbing. I I am not sure that particular knowledge will be rather beneficial to us in our current predicament, but if I do ever need a plumber, I know who to call. Well, I'm not a plumber, of course, but perhaps I could figure out the magic system used to make the, uh, well, all the unpleasantness happen. Yes, but you see, the weirdest thing about this dragon is that it actually came to help the town. A red dragon helped the town? That's madness. Yes, it seemed Perhaps quite happy about that. it as well. Were you able was... to see if it was a male or a female in that dragon? Um, I think... I think it was a you... male, but I'm not sure it was specified. You all rolled perception at the time and did not, could not tell, with, with what you had rolled at the time, did, could not tell yeah, what okay. it was. It was very far away. Yeah. Well, it didn't exactly Well, it did come closer us. for the T-Rex, but you guys weren't examining it then, necessarily. I was a bit busy trying to get off the T-Rex at the That's time. true. You were a bit busy. Yeah. Yeah. Are you sure Unfortunately, it, it did not fly over in such a way that it put all its goods on display, which honestly might be for the best. I am not sure I would be able to sleep after such a sight. <laughs> really? All right. Find it that exciting, do you? All right. That's good to know. Well, what can I say? I've felt a bit of a connection to this dragon for a while now. I'm planning to go out at some point and try to find out whether it's actually here to help the town or to be in the way of the town. And if so, I'm probably going to get a good amount of distance before trying to anger it. Can you both roll me a wisdom save? It's a natural 20. <laughs> Cheating. I reject what? your reality and substitute my own. Oh, yeah, you do. <laughs> Nine. Okay. nine. Continue your conversation. Okay. Well, I would say that if a dragon was to protect this town, they would see it as their own property. I mean, otherwise, what would be the point? Maybe they want to conquer it. Well, so... If it wanted to conquer the town, it surely would have swept in and done so by now. Maybe there's something keeping it away, like all this weird magic stuff. Hmm. I did recently try to get a general fix on its location. I've heard rumors that it was somewhere near the northeast, and I tried to sense it earlier with uh, my training, basically. Oh, but... and you picked me up by mistake because of my draconic heritage, and I, I, I slipped like, uh, the hair away from like some bit of stuff. Yes, and if you happen to have any, like... Celestial, elemental, and undead background somewhere hidden as well? Undead. That would explain quite a few no, things. Surely not. What do you take me for? Undead? Right, Definitely. then we might have a bit of work in the near future, my good sir. 
work? In what sense? Yes. Oh yeah, for those who are wondering why he has net 20s, he has net 20s because on the right hand side here, if you do exclamation point St. Jude, you can donate uh, to a wonderful cause and give our wonderful cast members um, goodies, or you can give them to me, but make sure you specify what, uh, who you're giving them to. It's very fun. We left it up to luck, and then the first three people were like, yoink, that's mine now. Yeah. <laughs> I got I greatly appreciate, of course, as one of the benefactors. I got 75 of them. <laughs> 75. I got I got 47. I'm I going through them at a rapid eight. pace though. <laughs> I mean, you have to use them. That's what they're they're donated for. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And they have to they have to use them. They can't uh, not use them. They can't hoard them. Much cool though that might be. It would be cool. If you were a dragon maybe. Mhm. Mm Sleeping on those net 20s? Mhm. Mm All right. Anyway, that seem to be some of the most, like, pressing matters currently. There's also a lot of children that have appeared to go missing. Missing children? Oh, that's awful. I mean, I know yes. the human children are, you know, a little more smelly than the ones we're used to, but that's still tragic. Yes. We should go look for them at some point. Well, I mean, kind of wandered far on those little things. Who knows? The, um, the lady in the tavern seemed rather distressed, so... Perhaps we oh, should mother, be able perhaps. to. Do we might think? be able to find out what she was bothered by later, once we catch up with uh, Bass and Uthal. Mm. Well, seems I'll be walking around in this uh, simple cloak for a bit longer then, until we manage to find this elusive tailor. I do have some leather armor you could borrow for the while. Hmm, that might be better than this cloak. It might. Lend you a bit more air of decency, rather than trying to cover yourself up with that humble cloak. I, I think I make this look good, but if the armor is, is, is you know, at least it's made for the thing, sure. It's kept in good condition, it's made for an elf, so I don't think we'll have any trouble trying to fit it to you. And surely and plus, with some fitted clothing you'll look a lot better than a makeshift cloak, hiding your mm. humbleness. Yes, must present ourselves well. It's the essence of nobility. Indeed. I but love I, this. I we have charity agree. outside and in the game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, so I will hand in my spare set of leather armor. Yeah. I'll change into it right there. Okay. No shame. I mean, all do the you, children Do you gone. watch, Varys? <laughs> uh, no. Out of courtesy, I won't. I'll yeah, look around instead. As you look Just around. Out anywhere but there. Yeah, <laughs> you look around. Um, I. It's up to you if you would like to use your passive perception or um, actively perceive something, but you do feel like something's watching you. It's the oh. bloody grass again. I'm, I'm going to actively look then. <laughs> it's the bloody grass. <laughs> you do... You look around with your with your net twenty. You look around, and the grass along the side of the street is definitely mm. wiggling towards you. It is uh, wiggling and waggling towards direction. you. There's also a <laughs> a tiny little sproutling. Perfect. That looks like it might be turning into like one of those um, dandelions. Doesn't quite have the little white pod things on it yet, but it uh. It's, it's lean in your direction. But that's not what's looking at you. Mm. Um, that irks you for a bit and, and, and draws your attention um, and almost draws you back to where Tover is. But then you feel the in the other direction something looking at you and you look. And it moves ever so slightly, but you see a little bit of blue cloak as it hides and disappears behind one of the buildings. I will just like... Not, like, looking away, but definitely, like, turning my head a little bit. It's like, uh, excuse me, sir, I will be but a moment. Take and your time. Walk in the, uh, direction that the cloak disappeared. Okay. Um. It's, the time for subtlety is over now. Yeah, you, you walk behind the building, um, and you look behind the building and there's nothing there. Do you look yeah. around more, uh, do you look around... Like you're investigating, or you just look the corner? Because uh, when you walk over there in the corner, even with the twenty, you just look and um, 
you you don't see anything. Um. <laughs> no, I I think I'll leave it at that. Yeah, I'll, I'll just stand there for a bit. It's like, hmm. I do wonder what that's all about. And then I like, after a moment of just like standing there, bit wondering. He has what you, suspicions. What do you do when you're wondering? You're standing in between two buildings. So there's two houses and you're kind of in the middle of the two houses. There's definitely grass by your feet. Uh, it kind of bothers you. You didn't notice it at first because you were... You, you wanted to go see what what this... Yeah, I was on was, a mission. Yeah, but now you've realized that there is definitely grass by your feet. Um, what are you doing? Well, as he's like idly like standing and looking around, he's got a wolf's tooth from like one of his like young early like hunting expeditions. That, mm -hmm. You know, he got the killing blow on it and as a child he was very proud of it. So he's, he, he kind of keeps that around and he's like fumbling with it in his hand like idly. And he's just sort of looking around, like, looking over his shoulder a couple of times, staring daggers at the grass. Okay. Do you look and anywhere else? Like, you look at you uh, look yeah. to the right and the left of you, and you look down at the grass. Is there any other, anything else that you do? No, after, like, a couple of moments of, like, wandering, like, wandering aloud as well, he'll walk back to, like, this sprouting dandelion that wasn't quite ready, and he's going to pluck it. And he's just going to look at it bit of a smile and he just chucks it you just chuck the thing that you were holding okay yeah i i chuck the uh the dandelion that i plucked i i like throw it near its friends as a message <laughs> <laughs> ah good old wild elves always stopping to smell the flowers it's always yeah, nice when like people that. are predictable okay cool cool um yeah and uh, finally, Tover has the clothes on. He just changed in the middle of the street. Mm -hmm. uh, and well, it was a dead end street, so it was a dead end street. There was you didn't see anybody, so that you know of. Uh, <laughs> and you continue walking onward. Well, that's much better. Is there anything else y'all would like to do? I'd probably meet up with like Bass and Uthal later to like try to figure out what was going on and why was she so distressed and stuff. And I'd probably also ask him about the lady that they might have seen before. Because that is now definitely on my list of inquiries, which is always growing, sadly. Yeah. Do you guys want to do the RP of you all meeting back together? Um, sure. Uthal's actually going to get a little mischievous, but mm. <laughs> but that might be later. For a different day. Is he going to eat the ears? Perhaps. It, maybe. Ew. But no. Bro. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I guess. Um, I guess we know why he saved them all now. We no. pan back in as um, uh, Uthal is just walking back from his room where he has let um, <coughs> the lovely lady Sarah Sandy stay in his room um he's actually got a bucket with him too that's got a he's kind of covered it with um he's, uh, with, he's holding a uh, bucket yeah did you grab he's, like a pillowcase or something like that and put it over the bucket or uh he, he's gonna use his bedroll actually to cover the bucket okay he's got a bedroll so on top like of the, a bucket so it looks like his bedroll is kind of like being carried by the bucket. Okay. Yeah, that's what you guys see as he comes back. Uh, Baz, you're, you're or Baz, you're sitting at the at the same table. You were waiting him. At, you were waiting for him as Uthal, you know, had said he was going to let her in. Um, he sits down at the table with this bucket, um, and as you both are sitting there, um, Tover and Varys come walking into the inn, and Tover and Varys, you see the two of them sitting down, and I will let you guys take it from here. Hello, we're back. Sadly, the tailor was out, but I did get this snazzy leather armor for my new friend, Varys. What's been going on here? Agree that that he looks a bit better a... now. I mean, there's no improvement upon perfection, but it's a little more decent, at least. <clears throat> Uthal's kind of just stammering over his words. <laughs> Dear boy, relax. It's fine. 
I have to talk to someone, don't I? There's no one at my own social level. I mean, I'm a high elf noble. I mean, I, have, I basically have to talk to you. <laughs> you have a four right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you roll the thing, in, or can you put the thing in chat again oh, so people yeah, who are just yeah. tuning in know what it is? Uh, if my page did, there we go. This was from Wild Magic, like, a long time ago. It's finally affecting it's me. It's finally affected him. Yeah. So he's four, four is so low. <laughs> You're so awkward right now. Continue. I think <laughs> that when they come in, Boz has like a plate of food in front of him. It's probably uh, like chicken and I'm thinking it's like broccoli with butter on it. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> the broccoli tastes absolutely disgusting. Oh yeah, he was he's just taking a bite of it for the first time and gets it and just immediately just uh, lets it fall out and kind of pushes the plate back. Tover, as you arrive at the table, you do notice the butter. Yeah. Um, hungry boss. You know, I'm, I'm, I've developed an irrational feel of drowning in that stuff, but I don't think that's possible in such a small quantity, and I sort of, like, estimate if it's possible. I check again to make sure, and then, then I'm okay. Uh, Are you sure it's over? It seems to be an giving intelligence some dirty check. looks right now. Okay. Oop. Oh. Uh, yeah, you're you're not sure. You, you might be able to drown in that. <laughs> But no. Maybe mm. choke yeah, on it, you know. Barmaid, could you take this butter away? <laughs> Thank you. Uh. She like shrugs and she kind of looks at Baz like, "Do you want me to take your plate away?" No, just the butter. <laughs> <laughs> she just takes the plate and like keeps looking at Tover weird as she's walking away. They seem to have a, a batch of spoiled vegetables or something. Oh, you need food? Well, aren't you the blessed lot to have met me then? And I cast good berries. Nice. Each of you see um, in the middle of the table a pile of berries. Let me just actually click the button. There we go. The floof. The floof. Floof. Oh, oh I can actually crying. see him now instead of dropping out of the call for a couple of minutes. <laughs> yeah. I think he wants to follow Brian, though. He doesn't want to come over here. While he's talking about taking the butter away and stuff, I, I take out the... Uh, well, there's berries in the middle of the table. Necklace. Yeah, I take a berry. I eat it. Please, partake, my friends. It's the least oh, I can oh. do. The generosity ah. Got me today. Ah, yeah. I've, 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 I've met someone who could do it before. Interesting. And I like, take a berry and I slowly start munching it. I sort of start staring at like this, you know, I'm, a little look of horrifying, but also like curiosity as I look at the necklace that uh, Sarah gave to me earlier. Yes. T um, to examine the necklace, you're gonna take have to take an hour of your time, and it's gonna be like an attuning for with it if you want to find out what it is. So you're gonna sit there at the table for an hour. Yeah, I'll basically just like sit there and like be attuning with it while we're like talking over things and stuff, okay. planning our next moves. Yeah, and I will put this in all your journals, and I will give this to you specifically. Where? Oh god, there are so many people in this game now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you want to read it, what it is. Ooh. The Necklace of Adaptation. It does require attunement. While wearing this necklace, you can breathe normally in any environment, and you have advantage on saving throws made against harmful gases and vapors, such Ooh. as cloud kill and stinking cloud effects, inhaled poisons, and the breath weapons of some dragons. Nice. Oh. Yeah, that's gonna be a big one. Yeah, you definitely. There might be a reason that. why you're getting that specifically. I have a feeling, yeah. <laughs> Push head on. 
good. They're coming to get you. <laughs> They're coming um, to get someone, that's for sure. So, um, what else do you guys want to talk about? Um, um I would probably... ask about the lady. Yeah. Okay. Big, big, big conversation topic right now. Uthal will just state that uh, her and her husband were in the forest looking for their child. The uh, husband is gone. Uh, uh, would have would Uthal have gotten that the like dead human things coming out of the ground were like zombies? Necromancy? Um, yeah. I think you would understand that, for sure. Okay. Or, or something of that sort, yeah. Uh, he's gonna say that uh, the things that took the husband sound like they were raised by necromancy. He says the word with disdain. Necromancy. Yuck. Yeah. I mean, really, if you're going to study any sort of magic, why on earth would you go rooting around in corpses? You know, this does raise an interesting point. I did a, uh, well, a bit of a magic spell earlier. I was able to deduce that there's a lot of bad things around here, like aberrations, celestials, there's the dragon we know of, elementals, undead, like, there's a whole bunch of stuff, and it's, like, within a mile as well. This town is in grave danger. I mean, not from the celestial, hopefully. She said there was also... A tree with arms. That you one... see an utter look of horror followed by like <laughs> anger and determination on Varys's face as you say that. You know, well, maybe that you can talk to this me in the Varys. least. You know, wood so... elf, wood. <clears throat> though perhaps, though perhaps she was seeing things at the time. That is when the... her husband died. The forest I... has been disturbed lately. Angry. Hostile. Dirty. I think we have to venture to the south at some point. There's... It seems to be spreading. Some point soon. Yes. Especially if you say you can detect these things close to the town. She spoke it of a hag worrying. as well. A ah, hag, hag sometimes ventures into town. That's not good. Definitely going to want to deal with that. But she is, and it isn't. This Are you all mighty heroes? When she gets into town, do we know that? Oh, sorry. What was the question? Like it was, it was to the group in general. Like whether we know what the hag is doing when she gets into town and stuff. Oh, not yet. I thought you were asking me. Nice, evilly, you know, in the shadows, going all. <laughs> Perhaps that is when she abducts the children that have been disappearing. Or perhaps it's a different reason entirely. Perhaps. What uh, do you know of the lady in the blue cloak? All I know is that she wears this same symbol that is part of my class that I, from this cloak that I received and on, while I was sleeping during the night. Ah, so you also received a package. You as well. Yes. I, I like, I like pull up, half pull out an arrow from like the special quiver. Like, yes, I have been bestowed by a gift, it seems. And so have you. That's odd. Although whether it might actually backfire is something that remains to be seen. This blue cloaked lady, she appeared to take great interest in me. Mm. Interesting. Didn't I took the opportunity the before you guys come? entered to, uh, I bought her a drink. She, she spoke to me briefly before she Spoke to you? Entered. When? She never said a word. It was like Ardoth. Ha. Huh. She said that he has something that she wants. Has Ardoth spoken to Varys that way? I don't think so. No. Um, yet, yeah, so Tover and Ar and um, Varys don't know what you guys are talking about. Hmm. That is unsettling. Quite. 
The lady also appeared to have left the tavern around the same time that uh, me and Tover did. Uh, when when we were stopped at the tailors, I noticed a uh, a glimpse of her cloak disappearing behind the building. I went over there and had a look, but I couldn't really see anything. So I assume she might have teleported or vanished or hidden somewhere. I don't know. So you think I did this not see any immediate hag? signs. You think this woman is the hag? Well, it would be unfair to call her a hag if that really is the woman. I mean, they, they can disguise themselves, you know, that's, that's what they do. Perhaps not. Uh, since Perhaps. you wore the same symbol that came to, to me, this cloak, that I feel more protected wearing it. If it was... She's chosen you to be like her protector. Maybe she wants to make little hag spawn with you. That is not the path I choose. For well, her. It might be her intent, though, to try. Letting a hag down easy is something you might want to practice. Uh, maybe by removing her head. See, that would work fine. They are monsters after all. Kill them all, I say. If this lady is the hag and she does leave gifts, as we seem to be, uh... well, that seems to be the conclusion that le that lies forefront in my mind, anyway. Perhaps she's more of a spectator than the instigator. Hmm. All I know is that she is very powerful. She completely blocked my attack when she appeared in the town it seemed as she was she seemed like a elemental when she arrived mm. yeah, i saw that i thought it was just another random magical effect you think that was intentional i do not know because she's able to disguise it. herself as dust and move at, when where she wants to that would explain a few things Including why she can sneak into the town without people noticing. Yes, the change of appearance is a very powerful uh, magic, very useful. I don't need it, of course, because I'm already perfect, but would like to learn it someday. I am so going through with this. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh, I was supposed to be muted. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Hmm. Well then, it seems we have a point of investigation. She did seem rather distressed. It might be amicable that we go south into the, uh, I think it was the Flip Dark Wood. I'm not sure. But we, we need to venture there at some point and figure out what is going on. The woods, eh? Seems like you're just the fellow for sort of mission. Yes, and if the woods are going to be attacking us, I might be your greatest ally. I have no doubt. He just mutters on his breath, I've been prepared for this. <laughs> as, he, as he puts his fingers along this necklace, daisy chain necklace. Yes. Born in the woods, molded by it. I didn't see the actual sun until I was but a man, and by then it just shunned me. All right. Is that the end of your all y'all's conversation? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we've covered the major plot points, I guess. So. Cool. Um. Uthal. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Uthal wants to know which room. Uh. Tover sleeps in. Okay. Um, hmm. hmm. I haven't gotten a Tover. room yet, so. Hmm? Yeah. yeah, like Tover, do you do you take a room at the inn? I could. I mean, gold is a part of my clothing, so that's a vibe. Okay. Sure, I could uh, pay for a room and then find a better place to live the next day. 
Yeah, sure. sure. You can stay for the evening. Um, that's easy to accommodate um, as everyone's heading to sleep. Um, okay. We'll do this this way. Um, the door opens up to the inn and Delilah walks through. She looks like she's walking <laughs> straight towards your table. Uh, you can't tell because of his mask, but Boz's face is starting to turn a little red. Okay. <laughs> Will you stay at the table? Yeah. Boz waves, um, and she comes to sit down, um, and she says, Can I speak to you? Yes. Um, and she looks around everybody else privately. Buzz uh, nods and stands up. Uh, excuse me. Uh, all. And she kind of like gives you all Buzz. like a bowing nod and uh, walks out of the inn and Buzz follows her. Um, Tover, I'm guessing you're getting a room? That sounds like a good idea. All right. You go in... You go and you head in and take your uh, take your room key and you head to one of the rooms inside of the inn. Um, are you doing anything else when you go to your room? Is there something uh, particular like um, looking at well, any of your gear or any of that stuff? I'm gonna examine the leg again, uh, contemplate if I can uh, make that myself to, to like have some sort of prosthetic uh, wooden thing. Okay. I don't think so. I think I'm going to need an actual woodworker. This druid craft is not that amazing. <laughs> it's, a, it's a fun spell, but it is a cantrip. Um, I would allow for an investigation or a medicine check on either, on, for either. I could see it going, like, either one of those working for what you're trying to accomplish. Right, Just to sounds... figure out if you what you would need. The 13, yeah, you, you think that maybe someone else would be able to help you craft something to be able to walk on this foot again. Mm-hmm. Whether it be a metal worker or a woodworker of some sort. But you think that you could use some of your druidic power to combine powers of, of someone of that craft and together you could make something that would work. Yeah, that's the plan. I like the idea of you having like a wooden leg. It's cool. No, I'm not just going to keep foot. walking around on nothing. That's not <laughs> handy. Um, is there anything else you'd like to do in um, Tover? No, I think I'm, I'm I'm good. I set up my sparse possessions around the room and I go to sleep. Okay. I'd like to remind you that you do have that other sickle. Um, and we will move on to... Um... Actually, one more thing. Tover, as you... Um kind of settle in your room and you go to sleep um, and by sleep i mean trance because health. yeah as you settle into a trance that's right um what does it look like when you go into your trance uh i've just nailed this to be as relaxing as possible so i basically just lay lay in bed for a couple hours and hum a relaxing t- uh, song yeah you lay in bed for a couple hours and um, as you're laying there, something gives you an uneasy feeling. Um, and you see something. And you focus in on what it is that you're looking at. You see blonde hair. Um, is it yourself? You're not sure at first. It looks like you, perhaps. Um, no, 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 no. It's, it's your sister. You oh, hello. Her. It's almost like a video call. Like she's, her vision is in front of you. And she says, The elf knows. The elf knows. And okay. she disappears. Well, that's fine. I mean, he's an outcast just like me. Sure. Sure, it's all fine. Okay. Definitely not a druidic ball, that one. And we will move to 
Uthal. You are following Tover to check what room he's in. Yep. Roll me a stealth. Nat 20. Nat 20. <laughs> Tover. Nice. Roll me a perception check. Oh, it's probably not going to be in that 20, but we'll find out. You never know. It could be. It could be. 5% chance. 1 in 20 chance. Ooh, 17. Mm. When you were opening, you put your key in the door, and before you turned it, you heard something. You look, eh, nothing. Must be like a rat or something. You turn the door, and you go in, and you're like, oh, these people, they totally live like this. And you go into your room. Uh, Uthal, you know what room he's in. Okay. Um, so with that information, maybe an hour after he's gone into his room, I'm gonna return to the door and unlock it. With, uh, do you have thieves' tools? I do. Roll me <laughs> your <laughs> lockpick. Nat 20. The lock is invisible. That's Nat 20. Oh god, because you know you can do it. Ooh. Shit. Nat 20, yeah. Uh, go ahead. I th I'm going to give Tover a chance to roll a perception to okay. see if he hears the door being unlocked. Because right. he's semi -un semi conscious. Yeah, because he's semi conscious. That's a good point that the locks are invisible now. He hears it. With the, I have a Nat 20. Yeah, I mean, she's oh. probably going to end up higher than my 22. Yeah. Oh, what's your, what's your default? Um, or what's your bonus then with your Nat 20? Uh, it says query. Do you want me to do dex? Well, uh, oh, yeah, what are, I think it's just, um, perception is wisdom, I believe. Yes. Yes. So Uthal's would be... Stealth dex. Okay, I went to your other character sheet, not that one. The <laughs> other one that you haven't brought up yet. Um... We need to fight. I know. Um... Yeah, so your wisdom is zero, so you get no modifier for it. So you, it would just be a twenty. Okay. For Wait, your... is it, is it stealth. Oh, your stealth. You stealth. have five. You have plus stealth five, so it'd be twenty-five. Good. Ooh, you do beat him barely. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, you you don't hear it actually. Oh, damn, that's good. Ooh. Okay. And I'm going to open the door just enough for me to see in. And I'm going to subtly using subtle spell cast my darkness with two darkness points so that I can see through it. Okay. Put that in chat for people. This is the first time it's being casted. Explain how that works. Uh, let's see. Was, is it the eyes of the dark one? Yeah, there it is. So starting at first level, you have dark vision. Uh, at third level, you can learn darkness spell, which doesn't count against my spells. Uh, as I can cast it using two sorcery points, uh, and if I use it casting sorcery points, I can see through the darkness created. The All right, and then cast darkness for us. Yep. And talk a little bit about that, because that's going to be the first time we have seen that spell in uh, uh, this campaign. Time, actually, but... <clears throat> so, magical darkness spreads from a point I choose within 15 feet, within range, uh, sorry, 60 feet. Uh, to fill a 15-foot radius sphere for the duration. Darkness spreads around the corners. Creature with dark vision can't see through it, and non-magical light cannot illuminate it. Um, it can be dispelled by magical light of second, of a se third level or higher. Um, okay, so what's your plan with this? You cast so it. I'm then going to sneak in with my bucket. Okay. You're 25 stealth. You're, you're still good. With and, your bucket. Uh, I'm gonna dump the ears around the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> I'm so confused. Okay. Um, your snack pile. Sleight of hand, <laughs> I think, is gonna be the best option for uh, doing this without him noticing. Okay, that makes sense, also right? the darkness, so. It's a net I'll give you advantage. Nice okay, yeah. Can you just roll it so I know what your modifier is? Yep. On sleight of hand? It's two. Okay. All right, so 22. Um, Tover, you do get to do a perception on this. Yeah, because I have dark vision. It doesn't yeah, matter. That doesn't work it's, in dark. It's magical darkness. It's different. I, I, I understand. You might be able to hear me, though. 
Now I understand that, but I can see in the dark normally. So when I suddenly can't see, that's insane because that never happens. I guess that's true. And I'm still like looking around. It's just a trance. Like something's You're a up. Deep trance, buddy. Yeah. Welcome to Lucy. Romy perception. All right. Oh, dang. You don't see it, Tover. Um, I, w I wouldn't be able to see it anyway, but I know something's up, so I try to cast light. Doesn't work because it's not powerful enough. And then I get up. Yeah. But. And I probably like slip on an ear or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what's your plan with the ears? So you're placing them around. You're you're able to place them around. What is your plan here? Just gonna leave them there. Okay. Do and you then leave. do you leave the room? Yeah. So this is where you're gonna get caught. If you depending on how this goes. So yeah, I'm at an Tover 20, so. has gotten up. Hmm. Tover, you don't notice and you don't step on an ear quite yet, because I uh, with that perception you don't notice it. Or if you do, you don't realize it. Um, Uthal, you have just finished putting them down. Now, in order to get out, you have to open the door and slip out. I mean, I would have left the door open because I used the darkness. No. Oh, cover okay. Track, All right. Kind of. I'm going to make you roll another stealth check. Okay. Which is... I'm out of nat 20s, so. Oh, yeah. dang. Okay. I'm going to use my inspiration. Yes! Use that inspiration. You get advantage. For all the stuff. 15. And oh. now this is Tover. You get a perception to see him slight, his him sneakily trying to leave the room. Oh. And shut the door behind him. Dang, you are so lucky! And then as soon as I'm out of the room, I drop the darkness spell. Oh, there we are. Well, at least I was only temper. Oh my god, what the hell? <laughs> and I walk away. Oh, yeah. oh, this town and its weird magical effects, that's horrible. Something is definitely up, Tover. Yeah. Something's weird. I'm assuming it's a random magical effect like before, because I've seen that. That's this true, you've weird seen some weird shit. shit. If you way. end up counting them, there's exactly 85. Yeah. I wow. don't think he's going Man. to count them. Or isn't so technically many. wrong. Also, why? Why? So, <clears throat> he, uh, Uthal doesn't really like him to begin with. Uh, because he grew up such a different way. And, um, while he, someone because of how they grow up. Mm. Yep. Well, kinda. While Tover was talking, it sounded like he almost used people as slaves mm. a little bit which goes okay. against Uthal's ideals interesting all right so and Uthal needed to get rid of the bucket what's your alignment Uthal chaotic neutral okay cool I was gonna make a note of something if uh, you you were a different alignment but that that works um Uthal What's your plan tonight? Someone else is sleeping in your room. Are you getting another room? Uh, Granted, that room that you have is free. <clears throat> yeah. Um, he's probably not going to get a room. He's probably just going to like go to the edge of town and just sleep outside. Okay. Yeah, Uthal, you go to the edge of town and you, you kind of find... Uh, he's actually going to go to the south end of town. You're yeah, a madman. I was... Mad, I I was <laughs> gonna uh, actually have Boz suggest that maybe they do a stakeout. Interesting. So you guys will meet up there if you end up going down there. Um, yeah, Uthal, um, you go down there and uh, you find like an area to kind of rest. I'm guessing you're not going super into the forest. You're kind of just sitting at the edge, of, like at the bottom. Yeah, sitting at the edge. Yeah, at the edge where the road meets the the town. Um, where it's still it, it's not corrupted quite. Um, yeah, you you fall asleep. And tonight, when you fall asleep, you dream that moment 
when your wife was reaching out to you and you keep seeing that moment over and over again um, there's something different about it this time there's something that you notice do you what languages do you speak uh, Uthal speaks common pop them in chat. and giant How common and giant that? okay um you oh. notice that your it's the last spam. You notice that your wife is wearing a cloak. Um and that cloak has a clasp similar to the clasp that you are wearing. Again, the same symbol on it, but you can't read it. Okay. <clears throat> He's probably gonna reach out in the dream and attempt to talk to Nala as she reaches out to him. Yeah, you reach out and you try to touch her hands, but like it's one of those moments where you, you neither of you can quite grasp each other's hands. And every time you wake up and you start breathing heavily and then you try to like go back, like you know when you try to go back to sleep to try to like redream that dream, that same dream and like try to get back to that moment? You keep doing that and keep doing that, but like every time at that moment you just can't can't grab her her hand. Um, and then we're going to move over to Varys. Varys, as you walk out of the inn, because you're headed out to where you usually keep your tent, right? Yeah. Before you do, you see the woman with the cloak leaning up against the inn. How close is she? Like, has she noticed me? You open, basically what happens is you open the door and you walk out. And as the door closes, um, you're looking up at the moon, and you look towards the direction that you're walking, and she says, I've been waiting for you. Ah, we finally get a word then. And that's where we're going to end it tonight. <laughs> ha! And I, if, if the four of you can make it next week, I would love to leave off here. Um, but I'm not sure if everyone is available. I definitely can. Don't worry about that. I should be good. Unless I have no up. life whatsoever. So. All right. Cool. Perfect. Yeah, I would good. love to. I'd love I to know, use the same. Perfect. Who would want a life? <laughs> I would. <laughs> I would love to have the same party because I, I have ideas. Um, and um, I think Tech Priest is coming back soon, so we'll we'll continue the line of Roxy and uh, Uthal at some point as well. So I'm excited for that. Um, but yeah, that's where we're gonna end it for tonight. Finally, hey. we're on the main plot line for the witchery uh, campaign, um, and you we're going to go... You had to literally push us there, otherwise I would have gone dragon-like inquiring. <laughs> yeah. Not quite slaying yet, but... Yeah, I think you'll find oh. that there's some intertwined action going on there. Um, you're, go witch. you're going down the path of both, let's put it that way. Uh, so we'll go around and let everyone talk about what their favorite thing was during the campaign today or, uh, you know, any last words that they want to say as well as where people can find them at. And we'll start as per usual to around the clock uh, to Baz. So starting off with a standalone, tell us a little bit about where people can find you and anything else you want to leave off with. Hey there, I'm standalone. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at S underscore Delone. Um, and... Uh, this was a lot of fun. Uh, thank you to everyone that donated and everyone that watched. Uh, just and everyone that played too, of course. You guys were Tover is hilarious. Aw, thanks. He is, yeah. yeah. I like Tover. I want Tover and uh, Alexei to meet. Oh, me too. That'd be That'd be a clash of nobles. Yeah. <laughs> Which I don't know. Alexei's a noble yet, so I'm still good yeah, there. You, you don't know that. That's funny. It's true. Uh, and uh, I'll give my uh, my weekly shout out to the Twitter account Blind Temple, who uh, he he's a blind man, um, who does a lot of uh, advocacy for um, visually impaired uh, D and D gamers, you know that kind of stuff. Um, he will help um, fellow blind people find games and stuff. I actually met a a good friend through there, um, through him 
saying that she needed a game. Um, awesome. yep. it's it's a cool the cool account that you guys should uh, should check out. Yay! Um, and of course, moving on over to Derp Digital, who plays the wonderful elf. When you're not elfing around, uh, what are you doing with your life? And then also, if there's anything else you want to say. When I'm not going around, like, picking dandelions to kill them as an example to their friends, <laughs> I, uh, I have my own YouTube channel. It's currently on the back foot again because life has been super busy the past few weeks, but positive things are happening, so that's nice. And I also had my birthday recently. That was a lot of fun. Paladin still got like the balloons and stuff in the background. Like the I do. They're still up. I love I like it. it. It's very cheery. But yeah, <laughs> I did recently get a code sent to me for Nimbatus. So I'm probably going to be playing some of that. I'm going to be Ooh. building like spaceship drones and like taking over planets with that. So Ooh, yeah, that's going to be fun. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> yeah. And we might be called Space session. Vikings for a reason. <laughs> yeah, I really like the bit in the end. I'm gonna be honest, just like casually, like I notice you, but I'm not going to acknowledge you yet. And then I'm gonna buy you a drink. Also, I really like the scene with the necklace. Like that came out really organically. I, I like that. I really like that. Oh, I'm glad you did. For me, I just I know that like I could just drop magic items as soon as someone donates Hail it, or I could just spiking. drop the uh, you know the wild magic whenever someone donates it. But for me, it's like I want it to be part of the story. Um, so I'm trying to find clever ways to make it not just like telling you the things and actually make it I, come out. I think out. it worked out perfectly given the situation as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that was, was a perfect reveal it, of the magic item. It yeah, took well, me a moment to like figure out the right item too to figure out to give to you so. But as soon as I saw I it, like I'm like, stuff against dragons. that's the item, <laughs> that's the one. Um, Eclipse's adaption is so good. Yeah. Oh, I, you know, this is supposed to be fun, so I want to give you guys some really cool items, and I can't wait for you to use them. I'm having a blast. I'm glad I'm you are. To use the sword. <laughs> and someone was saying you they would like to nominate uh, some extra experience to the players. The way that we roll is um, pending. I either give half experience or I give a full level. So I either give half a level or a full level per episode. So don't worry. They get, they get enough. Um, that's why we have people who are almost level 8 and 9 and all that jazz. Um, Javoltis, thank you so much for the subscription. I'm glad that you're enjoying the stream. Um, and of course, half my donations or, or half my bits and uh, subs uh, money all goes towards St. Jude. I do a Space Viking donation and you can always check those out whenever I donate them to uh, St. Jude as well. So, thank you so much. Um, moving on to um, Uthal, played by the one, the only Snaz2150. When you're not putting ears around someone's bed, what are you doing? And are there any final things that you'd like to mention about to, uh, tonight's campaign or anything else that you'd like to state? Uh, just like to say thanks for everyone for donating. Um, and uh, I honestly can't believe that the ear thing worked. <laughs> I know I had nat 20s, but- I don't know why you wasted your nat 20s on that. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm glad you gave- some details about it, and I was like, interesting. Yeah. I um, noted it. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, let's see. You can find me pretty much everywhere as Snaz 2150, except for the Space Viking Discord at the moment. <laughs> you can still find you at Snaz, I think, right? I mean, you do the at Snaz, but mm -hmm. um, my nickname's still Nate for now. Yeah. Which is confusing for some people. Um, but yeah, you can find me, Snaz2150. I have a YouTube channel. Nothing there yet. Ooh, is it, are we foreshadowing content? Possibly, it just depends on if I can figure out how to do stuff. First step oh. is doing it, man. Yep. The more you do it, the better you get at it. All right, exactly. awesome. Anything and else you'd like time. to tell the peoples? Uh, thanks everyone for watching. Awesome. You all. And last but not least, our, our newest member <laughs> to um, the Space Vikings for Kids. Uh, welcome, Tover. I love this character. It's fantastic. Um, and of course, oh, played by the yeah. one, the only Paladin Hulk. Tell us a little Hi. bit about where people can find you at. And of course, any last words or um, anything else that you want to talk about from today's campaign? 
Hi, I'm Paladin Hulk. I am a Twitch mod for Roll For It, Geek Space TV, and Random Tuesday. And you can find me in the Twitch chat swinging my sword or here now, which is great. Don't do that in public. <laughs> I do. I mean, there was a fair bit of that already. I'm glad we didn't pay too yeah, much attention. Yeah, you like to changed it. in the middle of the street. It's fine. I mean, not the first character to do that. You know, being ashamed of one's body, that's just so old fashioned. Anyway, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. Um, I love this episode. I thought this was great. I, I like that me and Ufal went from him giving me my uh, cloak, like being all friendly and kind, to dumping ears on my floor. Like, that's some character development right there. That's good. That's good stuff. That's why I was like, that's a change of heart. Yeah, because <laughs> I have no idea he did that. Happens. So, according to yeah. Tober, we're best pals. Yeah, I yeah. think um, from my perspective, that's why I was like, I need to understand why. And then also, I need to know your alignment because <laughs> there might be some shifting going you on. You want to know my religion, too? No, you know, it's good. I, I can see it on your sheet, but I was, I felt like that was a moment where we had to discuss it. Um, any other things that you'd like to let people know about Paladin? I don't think so. Awesome. Well, um, I'm just going to do one more shout out to everybody who donated. Uh, so here we go quickly. Iman, thank you so much for the $15. And well, thank you for the $20. Frank, thank you for the $120. Jesus. All towards Paladin Hulk's <laughs> madness. Um, of course, Mia, uh, Mr. Ian, thank you for the bits. As well as Frank for the extra bits and Harley Quinn and Juan Jockey. Oh, I miss Juan Jockeys. I hope you're still here, Juan Jockey. Thank you so much. Um, and of course, Aurora Marie for the lovely. There was a for Rick. If it could look like flowers or a plant, please. That was like specifically requested. So Aurora oh is out to get yeah. you. Um, and of course, Doozer Pin Dan for the thirty dollars. Iman for the another fifteen dollars to make it even for Paladin Hulk. And of course, Angel Ray for the fifteen dollars. Wild Magic Hype. Uh, so thank you guys so much and for everybody who subscribed as well as uh, followed the channel i'm glad that you guys are enjoying it um and of course if you're watching this on youtube and you weren't watching it live the link down below is uh, still bit.ly slash svk for kids if you want to donate um even if we're not live you know it helps uh the kids out a ton and tonight we were able to get ourselves to eight thousand nine hundred and thirty nine thousand dollars and fifty cents we are so getting closer to our goal of 25k for the year so thank you guys so much for making that possible and of course for all of my lovely space vikings for donating their and volunteering their time to be part of this i hope you're enjoying it i am loving all the characters and the story that's progressing um so thank you guys so much and we are gonna go do a raid but um first i'm gonna let these guys go so thank you guys so much appreciate it and um for those of you who are viewing, I'll be with you in a moment. Bye!